Hallelujah. To God be glory, great things that he has done. It's a great delight to be able to share another message, uh, which I titled, A Home Yielded to God. A Home Yielded to God. And uh, before I go into the uh, message itself, I'd like to read from Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to, th to 32. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God had showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men and to birds and fourfold beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, all the, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their lusts one toward another, men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that, that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do they do it, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity, and I pray uh, you will reveal yourself to us, even as we expound your word, even today. Have your way, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. A home yielded to God. Uh, USA Today recently reported that marriage is increasingly becoming optional and could be on its way to obsolescence. According to a survey of more than 2,600 Americans by the Pew Research Center uh, some time ago, which examined changing attitudes about relationships today. The survey found that 39% say marriage is becoming obsolete, up from 28% who responded to the same question posed earlier. The trend, obviously, uh, seemed to be more uh, uh, towards the younger. For example, uh, those ages between 18 and 29 save 
44 percent i mean those ones are 44 percent who say it's becoming obsolete and it's no more uh, 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 necessary and uh, the trend goes down the much older at the lowest since five and above uh, those are 32 percent so in short that survey indicates that more and more of our younger people are considering marriage uh, to be obsolete which is obviously something uh, that should be of concern now the concept of family again we are talking of a home yielded to god and when we are talking of a home it is based on the family the concept of a family god authored the family you know god authored the family it, it, family is not a man's idea it, it is god's idea genesis 1 27 to 28 tells us so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and he answered and said unto them have you not read that which made them at the beginning made them male and female and that's in matthew 19 4 to 5 and verse 5 says for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh those are the words of jesus christ so again that affirm that the idea of family is not that of man it is of god jesus gave us a sense of god's family model then we read in john 14 9 and 10 jesus said unto him have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how says thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. I and my Father are one. Again. I and my father are one, as John 10, 30. So uh, we see how Jesus himself uh, described the relationship with him and the father. Uh, so the Godhead are in one accord. They, 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 they relate together very closely. Uh, family, again, when we look at it, is a place where godly children are raised. Family, that is properly and well modeled is a place where godly children are raised genesis 18 in verse 19 it tells us for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him this is God speaking about Abraham. God said he knows him. He will uh, command his children and his household after him. They will keep the way of the Lord. So we, we see again that uh, godly children are raised within the family. And in Ephesians 6, 4, we read, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's the charge that we have, that we will raise up children that are godly within the family setup. One thing to note is that our increasingly ungodly society stand contrary to the family concept. I, 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 I mean, we don't need to look very far away to see that that is indeed uh, what is happening uh, and the family values are, are diminishing and even the societal system uh, does not honor uh, uh, the godly family children are being uh, allowed to do as they like and uh, we now have cases where uh, teachers 
some teachers would allow uh, children to decide uh, what name, what pronoun they want to use in their in their school, and even to the extent of uh, uh, changing their sex without even uh, reference to their parents. And, and so teachers do uh, collude with the children to not tell, or in fact, <laughs> order the children to not tell their parents. That, that's the society we are in. We are in increasingly our increasingly ongoing society stand contrary to the family concept and uh, that has been predicted back in romans chapter 1 verse 21 says so because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. And verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's the uh, uh, idea that uh, Paul, when writing to the Romans, had. Uh, predicted is going to happen and it, it's like yesterday it's happening in our society today regrettably in first timothy 4 1 to 3 we also read now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. This has been predicted and we can see it happening. Again, the concept of family. Uh, a home uh, yielded to God, therefore, uh, would be able to stand against this situation that we have in our society. What is left for us to do? We must take a stand for the family. We must take a stand for the family. First Corinthians 7, 1 to 2. Now, concerning the things we are for, you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her husband. I, again, as uh, Paul writing, to uh, avoid fornication, it is, it is good to marry. And uh, in Proverbs 5, verse 16, he said, let thy fountain be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished also with her love. This is the emphasis uh, that we have even in the book of Proverbs, the need to uh, uh, stick to your spouse, to remain with your spouse, to play purity, uh, uh, play purity with your spouse, and not uh, go from one to another. We must model uh, family for us in our society. Our own families should be so that take a stand. For God, others will see it and seek to emulate our own life and our families. Model, our families should be model of the blessings and benefits that God provides. We must model the blessings and benefits that the family, a godly family, uh, uh, provides, presents, that God gives 
to a, a family. Uh, we must do what is uh, uh, right. We, our family must uh, produce uh, uh, such that makes people to want to emulate. Our children should be a uh, uh, model to, for others to, to see, to, to, to be encouraged by, uh, and to follow through. Uh, Jeremiah 7, 5 to 10, For if ye truly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after God to your heart, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye still murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not? and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations? No, it is not for us to do. We are to uh, 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 take a stand for the Lord. As must be a family that uh, not only loves God, obeys God, serves God, uh, submit to God and his will and his way. We must establish a home whose purpose is to honor God. We, in other words, our home will be such that uh, seek to do the will of God. Uh, in Psalm 119, verse 63, we read, I'm a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. I associate with people who fear God and who do his will. Establish a home whose purpose is to honor God. When we honor God, we obey him. We fellowship with other believers. That's honor. We, 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 we come together. We pray. We, we worship God. We, we serve the Lord with others who share uh, the same value as ours. We are to serve the Lord faithfully. God seeks such of those that are called by his name. This also means parents must determine to model godliness in their home. It is not just to order children to be disciplined. And the children should also see the parents exhibiting a life of discipline. Parents must be determined to model godliness. It's not enough to uh, send the children to Sunday school and the parents stay at home. Well, they will do because they will be their parents. But no sooner had they have their own freedom that they will stop because they cannot believe or accept that it's important. If it was important, their parents would have gone as well. I mean, that would be the thinking. So no, parents must determine to model godliness. In Joshua 24, verse 15, it says, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We must pursue a curse. A cause to lead the family to serve the God, to serve God. We must pursue a path that will lead the family to serve God. And we must take them along to where uh, 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 we, 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 we make it convenient for them to serve the Lord. When Jesus uh, uh, was speaking to the crowd, and uh, people, some had it and they thought this was tough. And many, the Bible says, many left him. And in John 6, verse 67, Jesus then turned to his disciples, unto the twelve, telling them, asking them, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of life, of eternal life. Uh, we must uh, take our family 
along the path that will make it easier for them to seek the Lord and to serve him. Peter said it clearly, where shall we go, Lord? We have followed you. You have the word of life. We know you have the word of life, of eternal life. And that's where we want to stay. Where are we leading our family? The parents, we have a responsibility here. Again, a home that is yielded to God. Uh, we must uh, establish our home in, a, in such a way uh, that the purpose is to honor God. Whatever it takes to honor the Lord, that we must pursue. So in conclusion, the reality of our day is that the concept of a godly home is increasingly unpopular. Followers of Christ have a role to model godliness in their homes. The challenge to raise godly children is fierce more than ever before. And as Christians, we must commit to let God have the controlling influence in our homes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again. We are grateful for all that you have done. We thank you for your word that we have spoken. We pray, oh Lord, that you will enrich uh, every hearer and you will make it to uh, touch lives and bring them closer to you. That our families would be uh, such that uh, fear God and more uh, of those that fear the Lord will increase in our community so that, Lord, our society will be better off for it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. I, my prayer, our families will be totally yielded to God. Amen.